What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna be making this really cool procedural coding effect with geometry nodes. And it's actually remarkably simple to make. So let's just hop into our scene here. As always, I'm gonna switch over to cycles, GPU compute, lower my render samples to 128, and I'm gonna switch my color management down here to high contrast. Now I'm going to delete the default cube, shift A, and add in a monkey head. This just gives us a more complex mesh to test our effect on while we're building it to make sure it'll work on like anything we could realistically hope to need to use it on. So add a new geometry node modifier, slide this over, shift A, and grab a distribute points on faces node. Now I'm going to switch this to Poisson disk and we're gonna set this density max to just something laughably huge. I'm gonna do 20,000 because we need this thing effectively covered entirely with points. Now, if we grab a points to volume node and let's lower this radius to like 0.02, shift A and grab a volume to mesh Plug that in there. Now I'm going to come back here and I'm going to switch my resolution from amount to size. And I'm going to set my voxel size to something like 0 0.02. That looks pretty good. And you can see this sort of gives us like the basics of the outer coating already. And this radius here sort of controls the amount of coating, if you can think about it that way. So in order to make this sort of fall off controllably, I'm going to go shift A, add in an empty, I'll add an empty sphere so it's a little bit more visually appealing. And then we're going to come back, click onto Suzanne again, shift A, and add in an object info node. Now if we plug the object input here into the group input over here, then we can select our empty over in our interface, just like that. And let's switch this to relative. Now, I basically want the coating to be thicker the closer it is to our empty. So to do this, first I'm going to grab a capture attribute node, switch this to vector, and I'm going to capture the position of each of our points. And then I'm going to find its distance using a vector math node to our empty over here. And so if we just plug both of these in, then this value output here is basically just the distance from each of our points to the empty. And so we don't want to just plug this into the radius though, because if you think about it, if a point is really close to the empty, then its distance will be small, so the radius will be small. So we basically want to invert this. So shift A, grab a math node, switch this to subtract, and plug the value output of our distance into the bottom. Now the larger the distance is, the smaller this value output will be. But we're also going to have to get rid of any negative values because the radius doesn't really care if it's positive or negative, so we'll still run into issues if we just plug this in directly. Let's just fix that easily by grabbing a greater than and a multiply node and plugging our value output into the greater than value slot. And we'll set the threshold to zero. And then we'll just multiply these value outputs together. So that way, if the value is less than zero, it just equals zero. Then let's slide this over, shift D on the multiply node, switch this to divide, and divide by something like 100. Plug this into the top and plug this value into the radius. Now I'm going to shift D on this divide node and I'm going to switch it to multiply and switch this bottom value to something like 4 and we'll just plug that in there. And now as you can see we sort of have like an amount control. So if I grab a group input and plug this in here. Now I can control the amount for my interface over here, but it still looks really like speckled and spotted. So I'm going to slide this over 
And I'm going to slide over everything after my divide node as well. Shift A and grab a float curve. And now if we plug this in here and add in a point in the middle here and make sure it is set to auto clamped as well, we can just slide this up. And now you can see we just sort of have this sort of bulbous sort of fall off at the end. Nice and sharp. That's what we want. Now that looks pretty good. But as you'll notice, it's really inset toward our empty. Like I kind of want the edge of my empty to define where the edge of this is. Easy solution. If we come back to our subtract node, you can see by controlling the value up here, we control the amount. So we can just plug the scale from our object info into the top value here and voila. Now, if we scale our empty, anything that's inside the empties like sort of quote unquote spherical volume will be coated. Now I'll come over here to the end and shift a let's add in a join geometry and a group input. And we'll just make the last operation joining our original geometry with our new sort of coating mesh. Now, the last thing we're going to do is I want to get rid of this sort of chunky blockiness that we get out of our volume to mesh node. And if you guys have seen my previous two videos, you probably know what we're going to do by this point. First thing we'll do is we'll add in a set shade smooth node. Plug that in here. And then we're going to add in a set position node. Plug that in right here and an edge vertices node. So we can shift a grab a vector math node. And if we average the positions of each vertex, as you can imagine, that'll smooth this out. So we'll just divide the positions when added together by two and plug that into the position slot on this set position node. And as you'll notice, it does smooth it out, but only a little bit. So I'm just going to duplicate this and repeat this operation uh, like 10 times. So I'll speed up this portion of the video. And with that done, we can just grab the last set position geometry output and we'll plug that into our set shade smooth node. Now, as you can see, it has been smoothened out and that is basically the effect. The only last thing I kind of want to do is if you want to add some distortion to this edge, we can just come back here and in between our distance and our subtract node, just add in a mix RGB and a noise texture and a math node. Plug the color into here and plug this into the second color input. And now as you adjust this, you can see we sort of have this like globular distortion effect on our edge. I'm going to lower my roughness value and maybe my scale as well. Then as you adjust this add value, that'll also affect it. So just set that to whatever you like. And yeah, that is basically the entire coding effect. As always, you're going to want to add in a set material node before your join geometry and plug that in here. So that way you can assign a material to your coat. And I'm just going to apply something very simple to my Suzanne head. I'm going to add in a glass BSDF and just give it a really simple sort of ice shader. Add in an HDRI. And there you go. And that is the end of the tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. If you liked it, consider liking and subscribing, all that jazz. And I hope to see you in the next one.